Hello, welcome to Steve's Retro Loft. Today I'm going to take a look where it all started for me. It's a ZX81. It's a broken ZX81, so we'll see how much of it I can take a look at. I won't go too much into the ZX81. We know the history of it. We know it's a fairly basic black and white computer with only 1K. And we know the keyboard is rather terrible. But this one uh, is this one of these many eBay purchases I bought uh, many, many years ago. It actually costs around about £4.99 plus £5 delivery. In fact, I was actually buying a ZX81 manual, and I think the ZX81 got thrown in free of charge. And after about 15 years, I think I found out why the ZX81 was free of charge. I did power it up, um, probably foolishly without changing some of the components first, uh, and it seemed to be, you know, okay. Well, there's no picture on the screen, but, you know, nothing good caught fire at this point. Uh, but then uh, the smell started to emanate from the 785 uh, regulator, the voltage regulator. Uh, so at that point, I thought, maybe turn it off, buy a new 7805, and also change the electrolytic capacitors that needed to be done. Um, but, yep. Yeah, here we go, I now have the components and it's time to uh, take the thing apart and see, you know, just changing these few components will get it working. Will it? We'll wait and see. As you can see the layout of the board is very very simple, there's very, very few components on it. You've got a ULA, I believe the ROM, the processor, <coughs> and, and probably the RAM keyboard connectors and you know, obviously quite a few resistors and a few diodes. Um, the components I'm interested in, 7805 regulator here and the two capacitors here. Normally these sort of flat or ceramic capacitors tend to last a bit longer. They tend to be sealed so they tend not to dry out as much as the electrolytic ones do. So uh, let's uh, crack on um, and remove the uh, components I need to. This is fairly normal for some of my videos, uh, rather than actually sit through uh, me soldering and desoldering. I'll just zip through this bit because it was a little bit tedious. It took me a little bit longer than I thought. Some of the old solder giants really did. I really did struggle with. Um, but there you go. It's uh, you know you got me talking rather than some music because, frankly, it's only for thirty seconds, and I thought. I can't be bothered to put any on, so there you go, it's a very short video, um, so you know, there's no point sticking music on, so you just got me droning on for a few more seconds. Anyway, back to the normal video. A couple of things also worth looking at while I've got the finger parts. It's also checking for dry joints on the, on the power connectors and whatever, and they seem to be okay. Does seem to be a lot of flux, and yeah, maybe these have been reworked, or maybe the, they put a, lot, a bit a bit more of this on the, in the factory because I knew it was going to be sort of an area where you tend to get lots of failures. So uh, visual inspection looks okay. Uh, can't see anything got obviously too wrong. Um, there's no, yeah, all the other components look like they've survived. Well, they have survived uh, my sort of fix, possibly. Anyway, well, uh, we'll see. I'll just pop the uh, pop the thing out of the uh, frame, stick it in the case. Um, I won't wire it all up yet. I just want to see if I can get a, a signal out of the uh, RF modulator. Right, done some testing. The power supply plugged into a different wall socket. Seems to be on. Um, do the switch. Am I getting uh, the voltage through? There's five volts there, but you know, the regulator's warming up now. That's getting quite hot, quite quick. So I expect some of it will probably be burned out in a second. I don't think that's. I know these things used to get quite warm, but. Um, Yeah, don't think it's that good to get that hot so soon. Yeah, something's uh, something's not good on this ZX81. thing is the new voltage uh, regulators don't seem to sort of catch fire and smolder as quick as the other ones, uh, the original ones, so uh, always good. Turn that off. Um, 
So there you go, uh, a non-working Zerg Sighty 1. Um, they look like this when assembled, um, and they have very, very dated graphics, and uh, you know, there's not a lot you can do with them, um, especially when they're really dead. So, um, yeah, it's another groundbreaking episode of <laughs> Steve's Retro Loft. Um, if anybody wants a, a paperweight, a ZX81 paperweight, uh, let, ah, let me know. Um, it's obviously in the times of a. Uh, yeah, uh, the heating and uh, energy crisis. This little f nine volt um, sort of power generator or heat generator would be quite useful to have. It that's, that's very very hot. Um, yeah, so uh, there you go. Thank you for watching. Um, conclusion was uh, wasn't great, but uh, but there you go. I may be on the lookout on eBay for a ZX eighty one. Um, see you soon. Bye bye.